Hi guys, this is Charles and I'm one of the surgeons at South Paws. Uh, today we are doing a, another brachycephalic airway surgery in a dog. I'm going to start doing a conventional wedge alloplasty um, and then I'm going to do a folded flat palatoplasty and I'm using coblation um, to uh, get rid of the, um, the uh, residual or redundant soft palate. Um, which is a little different from the way that you might guys might have seen it in the past. So right now I'm just putting in my stay suture for my Ehler fold um, wedge or section. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any um, comments or questions, please post them because we have the live chat going, although it might be a little bit tricky to uh, answer the question straight away. And um, can I get a new set of needle drivers, please? These are bent. And uh, don't forget to turn on notifications so that when we live stream again in the future, you'll get a little ding on your phone. Um, that'll tell us when we are going. So anyway, I'm just waiting for another set of needle drivers because those are bent, but I can go ahead and start my LF fold. So, First thing I do is put in this stay suture. And then I make my wedge cut. And the key with these is to make sure that you go deep enough with your cut. So you're actually taking some of the volume of that Ayla fold out. So we're going right in here. Switch over to another set of thumb forceps. Can I get some, add some thumb forceps, please? So I'm going in quite far deep into the um, nasal opening. Thank you. Uh, these are the same ones that I've got. Can I get some um, AdSense, please? Thank you. When you do this properly, the piece that you take out should look like a little diamond. Um, can I get some gauze sponges, please? They don't have to be completely so I'll just grab me some over there, please. Just yeah. grab me yeah. some gauze sponges from over there. Thank you. All right, so just having a look at what we've removed, I can probably take out a little bit more. that we're taking out an adequate amount. Uh, that's what I want. Yeah. That's all right. My thumb forceps that I had weren't really gripping the tissue and so I wasn't able to remove as much as I wanted. Okay, and so then we'll just do a simple continuous suture pattern. And the nice thing about the stay suture is that it allows me to really get quite deep into the nasal cavity, which is going to number one, allow me to pull it over farther. And number two, it's going to help me with hemostasis after the procedure. Hey, we just got those 
I have not answered any questions. Um, so that's a good question if there's a risk of aspirating blood during the procedure. As long as you've got the cuff inflated adequately, then that shouldn't be an issue. Um, some people will pack the back of the throat with gauze sponges. Um, I haven't seen a real major issue with aspiration of blood. Um, and so I don't normally do that. If you're doing a very bloody, like if you're doing a, the folded flat palatoplasty and you're not using coblation, um, then there's more potential for blood to go back in the back of the throat. And in that case, you would be more, probably more advised to pack the back of the throat. Incidentally, this dog's name is Charles, which was, it's a rescue, and it was named after me, so I'm very honored to have a snuffly-nosed little chubby pug named after me. So you should already be able to see the asymmetry now in the way that we've been able to pull out that ailer fold on the first side that we've done. So now we'll put in our stay suture for the second side. And that basically is going to go in just at the top at the apex of our wedge. is bleeding a little bit more than the other side. Let's lift up on that stay suture. And even the action of just lifting up on the stay suture is going to help stem the, the flow of blood. So there's a question about whether I'm using epinephrine to control the bleeding, and I am not. Um, look, if I had bleeding that was really out of control, I might think about it, but it, this, this amount of bleeding is not really not that much. And there's a saying, bleeding you can see, hemorrhage you can hear, and we definitely can't hear this, this amount of bleeding, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, the suture that I'm using is 4.0 PDS. Um, and the sutures are probably going to be sneezed out um, before they absorb. And we don't normally actively take these stitches out.
and just had a lasso around my iced finger that I've used to chill the um, soft palate. Yeah, so I will be doing the soft palette in just a minute. Um, so I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks. Nice and symmetrical. All right, so now I'm just going to raise the jaw a little bit so that we can see down into the palette. Um, so I'm just using a good prosumer um, camera, yeah. and um, so it's just a Canon, um, I can't see what number it is, but I can show you, um, I'll go through this later on. All right, so let me just drop the camera down a little bit. Okay. All right, so now we can see our soft palette in there. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that spot there. So that's pretty good. So we can see the tonsils on either side. Um, and I'm just going to have a feel. Um, just um, some long debates, please. And I'll need to have my collaboration on. Do we have suction plugged into coagulation? I need suction turned on, please. So the folded flap palatoplasty, what we're doing is we're taking out the meat of the soft palate. There's a little bit of blood down there. Um, and not only are we shortening it, but we're also decreasing the thickness. So I've got the soft palate here, and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the caudal end of the soft palate and bring it up to the cranial extent of where it wants to naturally sit, which is just kind of right up in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, so that's almost to the pigmented, or the, uh, the transition between pigmented and non-pigmented epithelium. So... Um, so we've got this turned on. I need my pedal here. This fluid line turned on. Got some auto. So coblation is this really cool technology that creates a plasma field around the end of the probe and it basically um, vaporizes the tissue. So this is yet another different type of electric artery that we have. Um, now, so basically what we do, the bakey, I don't need that. Um, so I'm just looking at where this normally wants to sit. So that's going to go right up to about here. Um, the other thing that I might do, is there any way, John, that you can get over to here? Yeah. Um, and then I'll get a ribbon retractor, please. Yeah, it's a pretty uh, smaller if we have it. Okay. Actually, that's okay. All right, so we'll just have you pull the tongue down here. Just grab the... 
kind of like that. Just grab it with your yeah. hands, yeah, and see if that increase improves our view a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I actually, I'm actually okay for the moment. All right. So now, what we're going to do is I'm just going to grab on up here. Yeah. How what? Yep. Yeah. All right. So this this coblation unit, it just um, it again, it creates this plasma field around the end of the probe, and it just vaporizes the tissue. People, uh, ENT surgeons use them in human medicine for. Uh, for tonsils frequently because it significantly reduces the amount of inflammation that you get. So you see that we're cutting that away, getting a little bit light if we could um, deepen them up a little bit. The other nice thing about it is that the temperature only gets to about 50 degrees centigrade compared to a ligature or cautery which gets up to about 450 degrees centigrade. And if I inadvertently go up into the nasal nasopharynx, it's not a big deal. Grab onto the right angle. And the other nice thing is that it has bipolar electric cautery built in as well. And so you're going to have less swelling than you have with conventional cautery as well. And it has suction built in, and so all this fluid that's coming out, accumulating around the airway, I can... Um, I can cauterize, or I can um, suction out. So that's just really nice. It's almost a blood-free surgery field. And that's what I've taken out, just the thickness. You can see the thickness of the soft palate that I've taken out there. Uh, and, and again, virtually no bleeding. And so then I'm just going to um, suture this up with some Poro PDS. And just making absolutely sure that I'm closing my oropharyngeal mucosa to my nasopharyngeal mucosa up here. Section a little bit more down here. So just put in a little simple interrupted suture at the apex. like that to make sure that I'm centered properly. And in human uh, surgery, ENT surgery with kids that are having tonsillectomies, the amount of pain that these guys are under using cobalation is significantly less than what you see with conventional electric cautery or even conventional cold knife um, surgery. The coblation unit, in contrast to Ligasure, the coblation unit is actually not expensive at all. It's about 2,500 Australian dollars for the machine and then the wands 
are about $250 each one. And if you're using it for oral surgery, um, you can use them repeatedly. So for those of you watching from outside uh, Australia, the cost would be about 1500 US dollars for the unit and then probably $150 for the uh, the wands. And I, you know, you can reuse the wands, you can re-sterilize them. So with uh, coblation, the healing is accelerated because you're doing less thermal damage. So if you only have a, a regular electric cautery, what you would do is dissect the thickness of the soft palate using um, Metzenbaum scissors. And then you would um, just do pinpoint electric cautery for the uh, individual bleeders. Some people do simple interrupted sutures. Um, I'm lazy. So I always do simple continuous whenever I can. The other reason that I like doing simple continuous is that you have less knots in the oral cavity, which would be probably more comfortable for the patient. Compared to? Um, so I'm not sure I understand the question, it was just a comment compared to cold knife um, so healing is probably um, equally as good with cold knife as it would be with coblation, maybe a little bit slower with coblation. It seems to be less painful because it also, I think, just vaporizes the nerve endings as well. And when I'm finished with this, I'm going to check and, and excise the laryngeal saccules. But I won't be able to video that um, because it's just too hard to see. I expect that I will be doing some more live surgery streaming today. I'm just not sure exactly what at this time. Depends on what surgery suite I'm putting, put in, and um, and what procedures I have. So, but I hope to be live streaming. So please stay close to your phones. And I'm just making sure to close the oronasal or the oropharyngeal mucosa to the nasopharyngeal mucosa. And the coblation unit that we use is the company is called Bonds, spelled B O N S S. And I think it's an Indian company or a Chinese company. Chinese. Chinese, and you can get it, um, you should have a local distributor, and if you don't have a local distributor, you can go to alibaba.com um, and uh, buy them directly from the company.
Okay, so that's it for the folded flat palette of plastic. I'm really happy with how that looks. Now I'll leave the camera on just in case you guys can see when I'm doing the, the laryngeal sac. Is you guys ready for me to excavate? So unfortunately I do have to extubate these, this guy. I uh, just need to deflate the cuff, please. Um, you can use coblation on oncology. I, I haven't used it a lot. I have used it on brain a little bit. Um, Okay, so is um, ISO turned off? ISO's off, yes. Okay, so this dog, I don't know if you guys can see the laryngeal saccules in there. Got one sitting right here and one sitting out here, and we are extubated, so I'll have to move a little bit more quickly. I use um, a pituitary rongeur. Um, can I get you to hold on to the tongue, yep. please? Uh, this guy. Okay, so pituitary rongeur is something I got on eBay. I think I got six sets um, for 150 bucks or something, and that really allows me to grip that laryngeal saccule really nicely. And then I'm coming in with my Metzenbaum scissors and just making sure that I am not cutting through the vocal fold. Yeah, you can vacuum, that's fine. Sorry guys, we've got some vacuuming going on in the background and it's a bit noisier because I'm working in the treatment room, not in the surgery suite. So just go down here and get the other saccule. So that's the other sacral sitting right there. And now I will go ahead and re intubate. And just move the tongue out of the way here. And then before I release the dog from the head brace. I'll zoom out so you guys can see what it is. It's made by a company called IM3. Uh, uh, Igloo Mike 3, um, which is actually made for holding uh, rabbit mouths open for dentals or something like that. Um, but it works really well. It happened to, uh, the company happened to be at a course that I taught uh, for brachycephalic airway surgery, and I tried it, and I thought, that's fantastic. It works really, really well. So go ahead and reconnect, and I'll zoom out here so you can see that brace. So, so you've got this blue brace right here, and then you've got two bars coming up on either side, and then um, you have these adjustable mouth pieces here that you can move up and down and works really, really well in order to maintain positioning. Um, I've used it for brain surgery and a few other things as well. Do we have an ice finger? And now that we're finished, we are gonna go ahead and replace the ice fingers. And so that's a finger, uh, glove finger full of ice. I'm just gonna stick it back in here to ice the soft palate. And now that we're finished, I'll just remove the brace. And we have extubated, so I'll just reintubate in a second. Can we hold on to that, please? 
Hold on to the top job for me, please. Okay. It wasn't much mandible to attach the gauze to. Do we have enough gauze to tie around the back? Can you reconnect the tube, please? Um, I think I'm just going to tie it in a knot, and then we'll just have to cut it out when we're ready, okay? All right, so um, that's the procedure. I'm just going to, so the ice finger stays in for um, about 10 minutes pre and post-operatively. I'm just reading through the questions now. Um, question about using the um, coblation on oncology cases, you can, although I wouldn't be totally confident that I'm getting a completely really wide margin. Just put it on myself while I answer questions. Okay, um, so just reading through the live stream questions, aspirating blood, we talked about that. Um, we don't use epinephrine to control bleeding. Question again about blood going down the throat. Um, and so if we're concerned about a lot of bleeding, we will uh, pack the back of the throat. Um, so regarding filming the procedure, so I have, how can I? So the camera that I use is a Canon, and it's an old one. Um, it is a Canon Legria, spelled L-E-G-R-I-A, H-F-G-30. Um, and it's an old camera, it's about 12 years old. And um, that has been the best quality camera that I've used, I think, regarding accuracy of, of um, color rendering and um, regarding the clarity of the image. Um, and then I've just got a little Roland VH4 uh, mixer, and then I just put it in through a Mac computer. So I will show you the mixer that we have as well. I'll zoom that right out. So that's the little mixing board that we have there. And so that allows me to do the live mixing and picture and picture and stuff like that. And then just plugged into a regular Mac computer. And um, what other questions do I have? Suture is 4O PDS. Um, so you guys got to see that we did the Nares, the soft palette, and the saccules. Uh, so we've shown the head setup. Um, healing is a little bit better with coblation, certainly less painful. Regular electric cautery you can do very easily. Um, and so normally you would do just cutting with a blade, with a Metzenbaum scissor and then use the electric cautery for pinpoint um, uh, uh, blood vessels. We do have more bleeding, I mean more surgeries planned and more bleeding planned for tonight. Um, and ice fingers, last case today, no. Uh, and I've, uh, so other surgeries that you can use the plasma scalpel, you could use it in, I use it in rhinotomy sometimes. I use it in ear surgery sometimes, um, brain surgery. And somebody's pointed out the nice mustache. It's absolutely disgusting. But one of our other vets put me up to it for November, so it's for a good cause. Um, and next stream, hopefully with the be within about 30 to 45 minutes, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Excuse the mustache and hope to see you guys again soon.